welcome to Revelations of a Delusional Knitter. This is episode 127. I am Angela, your host. It is Tuesday, November 17, 2015. On to updates and housekeeping. Welcome if you are new. If you are returning, I thank you as always. And either way, I hope you enjoy and continue to watch. If you are not already a member of the Ravelry group, come on over and join the Ravelry group, Revelations of a Delusional Knitter. And the show is on YouTube, iTunes, and the website DelusionalNetter.com, where all the show notes are at DelusionalNetter.com. If you're looking for any links, I always put all of those on the show notes. On to declarations. What's been going on? Um, not much. I've been working a lot. There's been a lot of overtime at work because two people are out sick and then we're short three people. So, yeah. Sunday I did a double, so I worked from 6 a.m., and I'd work the night before, so I got to work at 10 p.m. Work 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Sunday. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> it wasn't too bad, though, and uh, actually, to be honest with you, if there was any day of the week I would want to do that, it would be a Saturday or Sunday. More so Sunday, because Sunday's quieter. But, yeah, so... Hmm. Um, I am planning on having a knit-along for 2016 on the group, and I have not hammered out all the details yet, but it's going to be something along the lines of the epic queue. So, like, Ravelry has a queue. You queue up what you want to do. And the goal for this is that you work on those projects that you've always wanted to do, but just never do for whatever reason. And they can be epic in that it's something you've never tried that looks difficult or challenging, or epic in that it's a ton of yardage, you know, maybe it's a big sweater, or a shawl, or a blanket, or something like that. And, uh, yeah, I'll have the details, but keep that in mind so that you can start uh, thinking up your ideas for things you wanted to do. Or maybe these are things that are already on your queue because you've never done them, but that's what we're going to do. Like, I have some, for, just for example, I have some things in my queue that have been there for years. Like the Even Star shawl. That's a humongous circular shawl, and it's a lot of yardage. It's like 1,800 yards or something like that, which I also have the yarn for that I've also had for years, but I've just never done this shawl, and there's just no reason why I've never done it other than that I just haven't. So, things like that. Things you want to tackle that you've always wanted to do, but you just never get around to doing. Now we're going to do them. And it's going to go for the whole year of 2016, so you have plenty of time to do them if they are large projects, and we'll have, you know, check-ins or whatever. We will have prizes, I just haven't decided yet what. Probably quarterly, because that's just easier. Uh, maybe some random ones or whatever, but uh, yeah, it should be fun. So start planning on that, and I will start putting the details up as soon as I figure them out. Uh, what else has been going on? I have no power steering in my truck right now, and I can't tell you how much that sucks. <laughs> it's, and if you've ever had that issue, you know that when you're going at speed, you're fine. Problem is parking lots. <laughs> I have a big truck now. <laughs> So sometimes I have to do, you know, a 52 point turn to get out of a parking space without hitting all the other cars. And sometimes when I'm pulling out of somewhere, I almost have to go into the other lane, which is fun. Let's hope nobody's coming. And yeah, it's not been fun. It was supposed to get fixed today, but my friend called me this morning and asked me if he could do it tomorrow. So hopefully he does it tomorrow because I don't want to drive it anymore. I really don't. It's really horrible. I went out today just to run errands. As you can see, I did nothing with my hair. I, I have Hermione hair if I don't do anything with it, as you can clearly see. It's funny, because not that long ago I was watching, must have been the Half-Blood Prince, because she was they were doing potions and she was upset that Harry was doing better than her, which means he had the book from the Half-Blood Prince. And every time the camera pans back to her as she's getting frustrated and working over the cauldron, her hair gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And I looked at my husband and I said, look, it's my hair! <laughs> My hair's crazy if I don't do anything with it, and I don't care, to be honest with you. I really don't. I don't have to look at it. <laughs> um, so I went, I ran out quickly. I went to McDonald's because I hadn't eaten anything yet, and it was 1.30 by the time I got out of the shower, because I usually work 2 to 10, so my normal day, if I just chill out and do stuff, I get in the shower at like 12.30, which is kind of what I did today. So I went to McDonald's and get a McChicken sandwich because I was starving, and I wasn't going to make it to the rest of the things I was trying to do. And I could almost not even make it through the drive-thru. I was about five feet away from the microphone <laughs> because I couldn't turn the wheel. Oh, it's horrible. 
And then I went to the bank, which was next to there, and that was fine. Except when I went, because when I pulled into the bank, I could pull in and drive straight to the side and park on the side. So when I went to leave, I could back all the way up and make the corner. But when I went to leave, the road that that's on is two lanes, and then it has a center turning lane if you're going to any of the stores, because it's a busy street. And when I went to go, I was waiting for traffic, and there was nobody coming, and I looked this way, and there was nobody coming, you know, the other way, which I, didn't matter, because I was pulling on to the same side. But I looked again, and then I looked again, and as I'm pulling out, somebody pulled into the turning lane in the middle, and I was like, oh my god, I'm going to smash into this guy. <laughs> so, I didn't, but it's really horrible to drive with no power steering in a big truck. It's awful. Uh, let's see, revelations. I do have FOs. I have an FO that should have been an FO a while ago. I did finish my stripy socks, and try not to laugh, but I finished it this morning. So I now have two stripy socks with ends woven in. They really, really are. And all that I had left on the second sock was I had to bind off um, the second sock. It was just hanging on the needles, and I did the sewn bind off. So I just did the bind off. This was yarn that I dyed with food coloring, and I like that a lot. It's a lot of fun to do. It's very time consuming, but it is fun if you have an afternoon. Um, to do that. So that's what I did and it came out pretty awesome. I was very happy that with the fish lips kiss heel the colors worked out perfectly so it didn't interrupt the stripe pattern on the top of the foot. So that was really cool. And here's my new socks. I'm very happy about those. And I also have another FO. I don't know if I mentioned it before. I might have but the Rebecca Danger Group, which is the one that did the Traveling Monsters, is having a holiday ornament swap. So it's not, you don't really have to make an ornament, you're just making a small monster and you could do a naked swap, which means it was just a monster, or you could do um, ornament in a mug. So the whole point was kind of that the ornament fits in the mug. If you want to send other little goodies, you can, like to your coffee, but it's going to fit in the mug, so that way it's, it's a really small, um, budget-wise thing. So I did find a mug today while I was out in my travels, so I was very happy about that. And this is the mug I got because my swappy said that she didn't want a holiday mug. Um, so I got, that's her initial, so I was really, really happy to find this because the store also had these initial mugs, but they only had like six letters. So I was really happy when I went on my phone in the store, looked up her information that they had one with her initial on it. So that's the mug I got. And then I'm going to just get some tea and put it in there, or I might even go diving in my cupboard because I have a lot of flavored teas that I really like. And here's my little guy. So I just did a monster chunk. From Rebecca Danger because it was a simple small pattern that I could do quickly although most of her patterns go pretty quickly anyway so what I did though to make them holidays I did them in red and white and I made him a little hat so I'm very happy with how he came out he does sit up um, if you put him down on a flat surface he does sit so I'm very happy with my monster chunk and he fits in the mug so <laughs> we're good um, so I'm pleased and now I can mail that out as soon as I get her some goodies and some tea or coffee or she liked tea I think so we'll do that my other swap too is also done I just have to wrap everything up so I'm very happy about that I just um, I won't show that because there's a lot of stuff in that one but it, it was a knit one geek Two podcast was doing a like fandom swap so like Doctor Who Star Trek etc so it was kind of based on that and uh, geeky things so that was a lot of fun too and I'm glad that my package is finally done because the deadline is Friday so um, I will be mailing that off soon um, so those are my FOs, and I do have a whip, so when I finish those socks, I like to always have socks on the needles, I, um, this bag I got from Slip Stitch Studios, I don't think I ever showed it, because I had to pre-order it, it was the bag of the month, and it's, um, Michonne from The Walking Dead, and it's a really cool bag, I don't think I showed it, I might have, but I don't think so, so it's got really cool, like, comic book images on the bag, and it's one of her... Um, it's got a nice bottom, so it sits flat. <clears throat> it's a drawstring. It's got a, it's got a um, brain fart. Grenade. <laughs> For the, uh, I don't even know what these are called. The, the push, you push them in so that you can slide them. I don't even know what they're actually called. Anywho. So, I said I wanted to make Christmas socks. Oh no, I wanted to make Halloween socks. But they were, there was no way I was going to finish them by Halloween. So I kind of did both. And they're making Christmas is the colorway from the Nightmare Before Christmas. So they're both, right? So I started one sock 
There's the yarn all wound up. I started one sock, and the reason I didn't start the other sock yet, because I usually do them both on separate needles at the same time, so they're kind of along the same path, was because I didn't bind off the stripy socks yet. So I now have the other needle <laughs> that is free, so I can start the other toe now. But this is how that yarn is working up. It's coming out really cool. So those should be good to go soon, as soon as I start the other toe. Uh, actually, I'm going to put that needle right in this bag so I can find it later. Start the other toe. So those will be my Halloween slash Christmas socks. And that's all I'm working on right now. I haven't really been working on anything else because I've had swap things to do and um, still designing that shawl. That is the other thing I've been knitting on, but I'm not going to show that until it's done. So that's it so far. A string theory. No spinning has been done at all in this house for I don't know how long. I really don't. I really don't. Scrolls. I am going to have one or two book reviews for this episode because Cooperative Press just recently sent me like five or six books to review. So I don't know if I'm going to do one or two. It depends on which ones I pick and how long they are. But there will be a book review in here. I just don't know what it is yet. But I will insert it here. This is a review of Amazing Lace by Sharon Mooney and Cheryl Potter, photos by Sadie M. Collins. It is published by Cooperative Press, $16.95 for the ebook, $26.95 for the print and ebook version. It's 122 pages, there are 13 patterns, and as you'll see as I do this review, there's a ton of information in this book. If you have ever been interested in designing lace shawls, this is a wonderful resource. Or, if you've ever been interested in knitting lace shawls or shawls with shaping and you're not familiar with a lot of the techniques, this is an excellent technique book. So it's got all that. It's a pattern book, it's a technique book, it's a wonderful resource book for designers. It's amazing. Uh, my favorite adjective is amazing, so don't think I'm being facetious while I'm doing this review because I'm sure I will continue to say amazing an abundant amount of times. <laughs> So I'm not joking, that's just my favorite adjective. So I had to giggle when I saw the title of this book. So I will show you an example. Each pattern has all of this in it. So this is the non-beaded version. Each of the patterns also allows you to do the beaded or non-beaded version. And the whole purpose of the book is for you to utilize those hand-dyed variegated yarns that typically don't work well with lace shawls. Here they do, because that's the whole purpose of all of this design work that she did. So this particular pattern is Kingfisher and like I said this is the non-beaded version. The beaded version looks like this. Lovely. And each of the patterns has the pattern, you know the typical information that you have for a pattern, the size, the materials, the gauge, the directions, this one also, I'm not sure I didn't look that closely, but you can string the beads on ahead of time or you can place them as you work, so it's got those two options. So here's all the typical pattern information. Then we have the actual pattern. Each pattern also has this, is what I wanted to show you. There's a swatch, and then she goes into information about the swatch, why she did what she did, what worked, what didn't work etc. That's where it's a wonderful resource if you're ever interested in designing because it's just chock full of all of this information about swatching and working out the lace and how everything works together and it's just fabulous. For the lessons scattered throughout the book in relation to different patterns or just they're just scattered throughout there's a ton of lessons and here's an example of a lesson types of yarn overs. So it goes over all the different types of yarn overs. If you're going from purl to knit, knit to purl, purl to purl, knit to knit. Describes for you how to work all of those yarn overs and there's also a picture of it. For some of the other lessons, and this is not all of them, this is just what I jotted down quickly. Choosing fiber, gauge, shaping, uh, colorways and when to use them, blocking for example, and then there's um, changing the sizing of the shawl. So instead of adapting the actual pattern, if you use different weights of yarn you'll get a different size and here she describes how to do that and how that works and 
yardage requirements and how you need to figure that out. That's just another example. And like I said, there are more lessons than what I just said. Um, and it's, it's just amazing. For the tutorials, here's an example of the tutorial for wrap and turn. Now this wrap and turn tutorial spans 12 pages. Amazing, like I said. So it actually depicts every single step. If you're not comfortable with or familiar with wrap and turn, you most definitely will be after you see this tutorial. It's got every single step in it. It's fabulous. I almost just said amazing again. Um, so that's an example of one of the tutorials. And like I said, this spans 12 pages. It's got everything in it. So now I'll show you some other patterns, but I did really want to emphasize the lessons and how it just, like I said, choosing fiber goes into different fibers and what works well for lace and shawls and everything like that and colorways and how to work with them. It's really a wonderful reference book. So I'll show you some of the other patterns. This is South Seas. As you can see, it's heavily beaded. I love that it's got lace, it's a lace shawl, it's a hand-painted variegated colorway that clearly does not interfere with the lace pattern and that's typically the problem you find with hand-painted yarns and lace patterns is that they obscure the lace pattern. Here you can clearly see the beading and the lace and it doesn't, you know, they work very well together, neither detracts from the other and I'm really impressed with these designs and how they work with hand-painted yarns. Here's another one that I like a lot. This is Grand Finale. It's a lovely beaded, and again, you can you can do the beads or you cannot. It's up to you. Um, shawl. And this one, this last one I'm going to show you is my favorite. This is Perlu. And this is not different colorways of yarn. This is a colorway of yarn. So this would work fabulously with like a self-striping yarn. It starts at the top center back, that's why it looks like you're using more of the color at the top because you have less stitches as the shawl grows. And you can also see the beading work in there. It's just lovely. It's absolutely amazing. Hmm. See? <laughs> I told you, I can't help it. That's my favorite adjective. But I love this shawl. I really, really like this one. And I'm very, very impressed with this book. I've never seen a book like this, and that's what Cooperative Press does. They have the innovative, the different types of books. That's what they publish. In addition to the 13 patterns in all of the lessons and the tutorials, you also have the usual book things. Here's all of the abbreviations and the symbols used in the charts. So also all of them appear to have written and charted directions as well. And about Cooperative Press, and that, my friends, is Amazing Lace. And I must say, it is, it is the perfect name for this book because it is amazing. It is a fabulous book, so you really got to check this one out. Uh, as I said before, $16.95 for the ebook, $26.95 for the print and ebook version, published by Cooperative Press. Book is by Sharon Mooney and Cheryl Potter. Photos by Sadie M. Collins. And that's Amazing Lace. So those are our book reviews, and on to testaments. Art Institute of Chicago, Daisy, sent us two bags for a giveaway, so I'm going to do the giveaway. And also don't forget, until the end of November, she gave us the coupon code of 5050, which is the numbers 50 and the word 50 in lowercase, all bunched together. And that gives you 50% off of her bags until the end of the month. Whatever she's got, she was trying to clean house and get ready for the new year. So I took advantage of that coupon code and ordered myself some bags recently. And I got a Grinch, which is awesome. It's on both sides. And I got a Darth Vader glow in the dark. And it does, because I checked. So he glows in the dark. And this one's more like her usual bags where the, the back is a plain fabric. But um, yeah, those were awesome. So for the giveaway, um, what are they doing? Hey there. So we had two bags for the giveaway, and they were Halloween themed, but I was a little late uh, getting my button gear and recording. So we have a zombie one. And we also have stitch markers with each bag, some skulls. And the other one is in a 
like Day of the Dead fabric. That one's black on the back. So these are the two for the giveaway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw two names and <clears throat> you can PM me your preference. Hopefully the two of you want one or the other bag and that would make it easier. If not, whoever gets back to me first will get their first choice of the bag. So we had 2 through 26. The first one's going to be 5. And let's do it again. 18. We have 5 and 18. So I will go to the board and go see who that is. Um, I'm just going to do it on the computer because it's going to be quicker. Or not. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Give you some hold music. Do, 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 do. In my line of work, I have heard some really terrible hold music. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. The Department of Children and Families has what sounds like 70s porn music as their hold music. I swear to God. It's horrible. Okay, number five is Pocketses. So, that's our first winner. Number 18 is Sabrina. So, um, you guys let me know which bags you want and hopefully I can accommodate. And thank you very much to Daisy for donating. That was very sweet of her. And she also sent me a bag as well. This is my bag. So it's one of the zombie ones, which is awesome. And stitch markers. So it's very nice of her. As you can clearly see, I love her bags because when she put out the coupon code for 50% off, I immediately took advantage of it. Intentions. The new shawl design. Like I said, I have been working on that. It's almost wrapped up. It's just a matter of me getting up the sample, which I have been doing. The thing is, I've been like swatching and figuring it out as I've been going. So it's a three-color shawl with some lace and some garter stitch, and it's awesome. And... As soon as it's done, I will probably have a knit along on the board and Becky at Morning Bright Yarns is going to come up with some kits and different colorways for the shop. Um, what else do we have here? Did I just I just like totally did everything out of order, so now I'm a little confused. That's okay. Hogwarts at Ravelry. This rotation ends Friday, so if you've ever been interested in doing that, then um, there's like a break week is when you can sign up again, so go check that out. It's Hogwarts at Ravelry on um, Ravelry. I don't know where I was going with that. Keep on knitting on socks on my board is continuing until the end of the year. This will be the last quarter, and I'll have a yarny prize for that one. And there's also the Gift Along 2015, and what that is, you can also look that up on Ravelry, is it starts on the 19th. A whole bunch of indie designers like myself sign up. We have 25% off coupon codes for the patterns, but all everything's all linked together, so you can just go to that board and find everything. And it's just to promote indie designers, and it's called Gift Along because it's the Christmas holiday knitting season, so you can get patterns um, with a coupon code. And then they have knit alongs on the board, so then there's prizes and stuff like that. So check that out, and as soon as it starts, I will put a link up on the, my board as well so that you can easily find it. I do not have any Ravelry patterns for you today because I did look quickly but nothing really um, jumped out at me for Ravelry patterns. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's never a podcast that I don't make weird strange noises, right? Of course not. Never. Okay, what else have I been doing? Nothing. Nothing at all. Reading I've been doing. I am on that slip trilogy I was talking about before, so the second book is Grip and I'm about halfway through. I'm also halfway through Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. I was just this year rereading all of the Harry Potter books, so I'm on that one. Actually, I think that's, then there's only one more, right? Um, TV. So, Sunday, while I was on that double, I was there in the morning, and the other dispatcher was watching Arrow, and I was like, oh, you know, I used to watch that, and then I got out of it, and I never got caught up, and I'm way behind, and he's like, oh, they're all on Netflix now, and I was like, oh, okay. So I started rewatching them at work. One of the day shift officers came upstairs to use the coffee pot and he was talking to the other dispatcher and they were talking about Arrow and everything. And then um, 
he started talking. So I was just minding my own business, and they were talking. Because they work together usually, and um, I do know the other officer. I did a ride along with them, but I was just over here, you know, doing my thing. Plus, I wasn't awake at all because it was like 7 o'clock in the morning. I, I'm not even awake at that time, literally, because I work at 2 p.m. usually. So I was just minding my own business. And then I heard them chatting, and the officer was talking about he went to some, not Comic-Con, but like one of those type of things. He was just talking, and he was like, yeah, so I was standing there, and I was looking for the end of the line, but I couldn't figure out where the line ended. So I turned to the guy next to me, and I said, hey, do you know where the line ends? And he turns around, and it's Manu Bennett. I turned around, I'm like, Randy, you meant Crixus? Because <laughs> he was in Spartacus as Crixus. He's also in Arrow. That's why that conversation came up. But I was like, oh, my God, you meant Crixus? <laughs> Total, like, finger, like, woo! Ah! He's a very handsome man. I would say it. Otherwise, but um, the show is rated G, so I won't use my foul Salem mouth to describe what I think he looks like. But that was just funny. It just cracked me up because they probably thought I was like sleeping over in the corner and then I jumped out of nowhere. I was like, You've met Crixus! <laughs> oh my god! It's funny. But Arrow is very good if you've never watched Arrow and you like those types of shows. Also, um, it ties into Flash. And I'm not sure if it ties into Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. That was another one that I got out of. Honestly, I didn't think it would be this long standing for whatever reason. I didn't think it would still be going, so I kind of gave up on it. But um, clearly I was wrong. Or it lasted this long because I did stop watching it. Because I have the kiss of death for new TV shows. If I really love it. Like Firefly. Mm, yeah, one season. Mm -hmm. That was all my fault. Uh, yeah. Once Upon a Time. I might be behind like one episode, but... I'm pretty much caught up on that. The Walking Dead, we're behind on. Because of my work schedule. My husband and I usually watch that together. We might actually, maybe tonight we'll catch up on it. Cause tonight and tomorrow my day's off. So maybe after he gets home we'll catch up on that. Honestly, after... Um, and I think my husband read something online that like you don't hear what happens to Glenn for another like two episodes or something. We were just like, really? And I've never given up on The Walking Dead and I never will. It's just not in, you know, immediate need to watch the episodes right now. It's just not there. But uh, we will watch them. Gotham, I think I'm caught up on, and that's going very well also. I really like that one. And that's all I think I've been watching. I, I, oh, I think I caught up on The Big Bang Theory, too. Leonard Nimoy's son was on as himself in the last episode, and that was pretty good. That was really funny. And, um, obviously, clearly, we all hope that Sheldon and Amy get back together, right? Because poor Sheldon keeps flipping out, even though it's not bothering him. He keeps freaking out over Amy, so they just need to get back together and be done with it, right? Ah, uh, but there wouldn't be shows without this drama, even though they're comedies. You still need the dramatic background, right? Yes, life. Life stories. Um, oh, I still have things to show you as I'm letting the clock run down. I told you I skipped over something and got confused. So I went out shopping today at Kohl's for, I really needed sneakers. I always loved Asics. You know there's different brands of things. There are a reason why there are different brands of things. Because they fit different people because not everybody is the same. Asics has always fit me very, very well. They're just like molded to my foot. For the last couple of years, I've had different brands of sneakers for various reasons. Um, where I worked before I started... 911 dispatching was in a business park next to a Puma warehouse. We got like ridiculous deals at Puma, like $20 for $80 sneakers. So I was buying Pumas. And those were actually pretty good. I liked them. Then one Christmas not that long ago, my mom bought me some purple Nikes. They're like all purple. So I've been wearing those for the last couple of years. Maybe, maybe two, maybe one or two years. I've been wearing those. But my feet are bothering me and my back and everything. And I really need my Asics back. So I went to Kohl's because I know they carry Asics. And I found a pair that I don't love. They do have some purple on them. I don't love the colors. I don't know why they have to make running shoes like neon yellow and puke green. And I don't understand what this is and why there's never like any normal colors. I don't, whatever. But that's fine. I found one that wasn't that um, obnoxious. So what I usually do when I'm looking for sneakers, even though as soon as I put it on, I didn't even tie it. I slipped my old sneaker off. I put this sneaker on just to, you know, I, I know what size it is because like I said, I've gotten those for years so I can just pick them up off the shelf and know they're gonna fit. I put this shoe on, I put my foot back down on the ground and I was like, oh yes. Yeah, I was probably a little inappropriate in the store. But anyway, I really need my Asics back. So what I usually do though to make sure I want that pair, because there are different styles, is I put the shoes on, I walk around the shoe department for, you know, 
five, ten minutes just to make sure before I buy them because they're kind of expensive. While I'm walking around testing out the shoes, I walk by these. Clearly, as you can see, they came home with me. Because I was not passing up purple Converse sneakers. Hello, David Tennant, the doctor. I've never had Converse sneakers. They are quite comfortable. I still got my Asics, like I said, though, because these are not these are not everyday sneakers. But I could not walk away from the purple Converse sneakers. Not happening. So both pairs of shoes came home with me. Spent twice as much as I intended. <laughs> but I do not regret it, and I'm very happy with my sneakers. The other thing I got recently, I saw this a, a long time ago, like maybe a year ago, and we stopped at Michael's to get a gift card, I think for my mom, maybe it was like Mother's Day or her birthday, they're both in May anyway, but um, while I was standing in line, and then I was at the register, I saw something that said Star Wars, and it was like by the register, so I said to my husband, oh, what is that? So he went to go look at it, and he picked it up, and he's like, oh, it's a Star Wars crochet thing, and I was like, oh, cool. Then I was next in line, and I didn't want to hold up the line, so I just checked out and left. And I was like, oh, I'll have to look that up again. Then I forgot all about it. Then I remembered about it, and I looked it up on Amazon, and it was selling for $50. In the store, it was $25. And I was like, what is this? So I went poking around. Clearly, whichever ones they had produced thus far had been sold out. So these $50 ones were ones people were selling themselves, or like really small businesses must have bought them up and were selling them. And I was like, I'm not paying $50 for a little crochet kit. There are 12 patterns, but it's only enough in the kit to make like two of them. The other day I was on Amazon just getting like staple stuff that I usually get um, on Amazon. And I was, you know, looking at, I always look at my wish list when I do that. Like if I get staple stuff or, you know, something little or something, I always look at my wish list, see if something's on sale, whatever like that. And the crochet kit was back to 20 something dollars. <laughs> so I bought it this time. It's really cute. It's just a little Star Wars crochet kit. It, like I said, it does have some yarn. There's like 12 patterns in the book, so you can make more. You just have to get more yarn. But yeah, there's a Yoda and a Chewie and a um, Stormtrooper and an Ewok and a Jabba. And then you have a Leia and Luke. So this is really cute. And Darth Vader's on there too. Is that 12? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. No, that's only 8. So I think there's more patterns actually in here than our picture, but I could not pass up the geeky Star Wars crochet kit. So hopefully someday you will see some little, I love how the Ewok <laughs> stick is a toothpick. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, here they are. Bubba Fett, C-3PO, Chewbacca, Darth Vader, Han Solo, Jabba the Hutt, Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, R2-D2, Wicked the Ewok, Yoda, and a Stormtrooper. That's all the patterns, but yeah. I was super excited about that. And actually, if you like to crochet those kinds of things, those particular kits, I think they're all Disney ones. No, because there was a Peanuts one, and I think, I don't, I'm not sure if it was South Park, but you know, things like that. There's a ton of these kits like this. I don't know if they're all from the same person, but um, there were a lot of Disney ones, Disney movie ones too. So if you like those, check those out. And I think that's it for this episode. <laughs> Luckily, I looked over there because I would have forgot half that stuff, but. I think that's all I have to say. So that's what I've been doing, and I will have to go record those book reviews and put those in, and we'll get the giveaway stuff sent out. And don't forget, Daisy still has the coupon code 5050 until the end of the month for 50% off of her bags. And happy knitting and spinning.